Good night, good night. Oh, good, night. good evening. Good night, good night, later. So good evening uh, to all of you. Welcome to Hungary. And indeed, I have been invited to give a sort of a, a light content, light uh, uh, style uh, uh, talk on our expedition to, to observe Tau Hercules in Texas. Actually, I do have a number of co-authors on this speech. Uh, Christian Scharetsky, who was indeed the, the, the discoverer of the first comet this year. And he is also the only European astronomer who has ever discovered the minor planet before it uh, plunged into the Earth's atmosphere. That was in March in this, this year. Yeah. Yeah. Conveniting a matter, converting a minor planet into meteorite. That, that was his job in this, this March. Antal Igaz is also listed here as a co-author. We were all members of this expedition, who is a well-known amateur in the community and for the video observations of, of the meteors. Marta Rozsegyi is the project manager. He has always been the whole project manager, so he was the main organizer. And Norton Sabo is the youngest guy who, is, who has not participated in this expedition, but I'm very sure that we would like to. Uh, coming next, next we would have liked to, and next time he would like to come with us together. So this is actually a story of twelve days, and hopefully this thing, yes, but it doesn't step. So please, yes, next, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a story. This is a light story of twelve days we spent in the United States. Actually, it was the the, the, the itinerary started from Budapest, then through Amsterdam. Arriving to Austin, and then Houston, visiting Houston, uh, the space, Transit Space Center there, then spending three days in the McDonald Observatory, March 30, March 31st, and then leaving uh, or departing June the 1st, then spending a bit of over one day in Albuquerque, which doesn't have anything to do with astronomy, but it was the the place for for the, for the what is that the walking that's not walking that breaking bad. breaking bad. So that was the place where uh, the that the serious breaking band was shot. And then we went to Flagstaff, which has a lot to do with astronomy. Then also we went to Las Vegas, which has not much to do with astronomy, but you can spend the astronomical amount of money on your there. <laughs> then flying back to Austin, and then flying back to Budapest through Amsterdam. Why this long trip? Because we had enough money. <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, in the last five years, I have initiated a visitor center at the Konkoli Observatory. And in the last five years, we have spent a hell of a lot of time and energy and resources to build one in Budapest. And I was really, I really took, take, took this opportunity to go to observe the Tau Hercules in the United States to include well-known American visitor centers of all sorts of astronomical or space themes, with space themes so that I can learn how to do this well. You know, because in the last past five years, we had had some ideas how to do this, but then you, you, you always want to learn from the best ones. So anyway, that was the main idea. We must be able to uh, uh, observe the Tau Hercules on the, on the predicted night of May 30th, to the, May 31st. And right. but then, if you fly almost a day to reach to the place, you don't want to come back after two days. So we, we figured out that at least close to 10 days or, or, or two weeks is the, the optimal time to, to spend there. So please, next, I, this, this doesn't work, so please. Uh, yep. Okay, so why uh, the, why the United States? This is a well-known figure. I'm sure that everyone knows this very well. The, the predicted radiant, was near Zenith. It was actually in Zenith in, in uh, uh, south of California, New Mexico. But then New uh, in, in Texas, Magnolia yeah. Observatory we did have huh? during the predicted maximum, the, the radiant of South Hercules was at um, 80 degrees, so 10 degrees from Zenith. Actually, the observed rate was the, the that was the idea because the, in that part in at, the predicted maximum was during daytime in Europe. So it was pretty clear. And why? Why Texas? Why? One of our colleagues spent quite some time in the past few years, Jose Pinko, and he has very good connections to the McDonald's Observatory. So he could 
he could organize a visit to McDonald's Observatory and he could organize our stay there, which was very near to the optimal place of observations. Please not the next one. Oh. So the idea was germinated by Christian Schanes. So he was the father of this expedition. Then the, another, the other father was Anta Ligas. The third father was Roger de Martin. It is becoming a very strange family no, of the LGBTQ first. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I joined at the very end of the organizing as the one who is the boss of most of them. But so the thing is that uh, I am personally a professional astronomer interested in stars and exoplanets, but I have always had some uh, good relationship with Kibetters. So the thing is that it, despite Christian was the father of this, this expedition, Remember COVID, uh, at that time, we, if someone wanted to fly from Europe to the United States, that person must be able, must have been able, must have to be able to produce a negative COVID test. So Christian turned to be positive just two days before leaving or a day before leaving. Mm -hmm. So three of us, uh, Marta Rojegi on the left, Anta Ligas in the center and myself, arriving after almost flying a day to, to talk to Austin, waiting for our luggages. Norton, please, next slide. So this is the, the, where the astronomical department is located at the University of Texas in Austin. And this is a really a bird center of astronomical spectroscopy. So whenever you find a, um, a study of the spectroscopic observations of pulsating stars like Cephates or RIRs or in the last couple of decades supernovae, you will always find references published by people from this University of Texas and Austin. So they are really into spectroscopy of things. And this building, the, the physics, math, and astronomy building is hosting the Department of Astronomy. But they have all, all, we, we already found on the first day, next slide please, uh, that uh, the, the effect of astronomy can be found everywhere. In the city, this is a picture of a of a coffee shop in the in the campus, and you can actually see on the on the wall these curvy lines. You, you just ignore the, the picture. This, this is an ugly picture. <laughs> but the lines over the wall. Right. If you have ever studied sepals <laughs> or RR lines, you will immediately recognize that those are radial velocity curves of sepal type variables. This is in a coffee shop in the campus at, at, the, at the University of Texas. So this is, I'm not sure how many visitors of this coffee shop recognize that these are radial velocity curves of Cephas, but Joseph Vinko, who has always also had some history with Cephas, just as myself, we immediately laughed at this, this picture or at this wall. Of course, no one noticed that this is the case on the wall. And I think uh, it was maybe to. The thing is that uh, uh, it was a real expedition. So we, we, we rented a car, we made very detailed plans well in advance, and Marto Roja, the, the project manager, uh, actually started the planning in early, as early as in January or late December, or already um, making water reservations, uh, buying online tickets for visitor centers, renting the cars, all through the official channels of the Research Center of Astronomical Earth Sciences, which financed this expedition. So the thing was that uh, when we realized that Austin is very near to Houston, which is of course, this seems to be near when you're looking for far enough, from far, 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 far distance enough. So anyway, we realized that Houston is nearby and <laughs> we made the plan that we should visit Houston because of the Johnson Space Center over there. So it doesn't work, so please, or maybe it works, that's it's very, very slow. So we decided that after the day, yeah, so it doesn't work. So please, Norta, you will be my, yes, my presenter. Go. Yes, okay. So the thing is that, that the, the, the idea was that the first thing to visit the Space Center in Houston, because we all, we all know that Houston, we've got the problem. So that was a place which was high on the list of visitor centers or space centers. So a few pictures of, of the Space Center, please. Just go it quickly. Martin uh, touching a huge meteorite stone. So this is really a real one, okay? He is, seems to be very happy. And then uh, myself with, with uh, Antal and Martin, myself after visiting a shop, I don't know what, what have I purchased, maybe a 
uh, one kilo of grain or something. So it's really ugly. So the thing is that this is inside a space shuttle. Uh, the, the model of the space shuttle, which, which was shown before on the top of the uh, Boeing uh, airplane. So it was really something which opened a lot of eyes, at least in us. You know, we have all read all about all these things, you know, a space shuttle, a Saturn V. Okay, please next go to the next slide. The 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 command center of the Apollo program, which was there. And you know, you many of you have probably uh, met people who are skeptics about the moon landing and things like that. <laughs> and you know. It's a different, it's, it makes a real difference to see these things as in, in their physical reality, not just reading about them or not just watching videos on YouTube about them, but really, please, next slide. Uh, going into the huge building which hosts a real Saturn V rocket, of course, made of three different parts, all um, Cancelled Apollo flights 19, 18, 19, and 20, I think, or 8 or 19, 20, and 21. So yeah. this is 100, over 100 meters long. And you know, if, if next time I'm going to meet a moon landing skeptic, I will tell him or her, please go there and think that this is fake. This is not fake. Just you want you, it, it, this is really an experience which is a must for us who are interested in, in astronomy and space. Sciences. Next slide, please. So the thing is that we spent a day in Austin, or two days in Austin, one day in Houston, and then we started our trip, uh, our trip to the McDonald McDonald Observatory, which is about 450, 440 miles from Austin. Uh, Google Maps was very op optimistic about uh, predicting <laughs> seven hours of drive. Over there, no, it was not seven hours. It was more like, I think, 12 hours, 13 hours. It was much, much longer. But you can see that uh, it's next to Odessa, Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, so near Mexico. So it is in the western, southwestern uh, corner of Texas. So it's a really a dark place, at least in terms of um, um, light pollution. So it was really very well opti optimized observing location. So next slide, please. And over the way, we were really experiencing the Texan realities like the dust devils. So we could really imagine that we are like on Mars, <laughs> dust devils all around the road. Next slide, please. And then when we approached the place, finally, after the long trip into the desert, we, we arrived to the mountains. McDonald Observatory is located at, a, at an elevation of 2,200 meters or 2,400 meters, something two plus kilometers. Next slide, please. And this is really an epicenter of spectroscopy even today. This is the Google Maps uh, uh, satellite image of the observatory. The old observatory which hosts two largest or, or medium sized these days, small telescopes, 2.3 and 2.7 meter telescopes, optical telescopes mostly used for spectroscopy and CCD photometry. And here is Hobby Everly Telescope, which is an 11 meter, it has an 11 meter uh, wide mirror, which is used solely or exclusively for spectroscopy of um, extragalactic sources and sometimes exoplanet post stars. Our intended location for observing the Tau Herkulis was from the uh, visitor center, which is downhill from the observatory. So the, the domes are up on the peaks, and there is a visit, very nice visitor center where we plan to have installed three different video cameras, uh, five visual observers. The, the, the loudest, it, it was myself, shouting at all meters. Wow. <laughs> it was very nice. And then, finally, and then, hoping at least when we, we were driving to, towards the observatory that we will have uh, good times. The, the weather prediction was excellent, but we was very well prepared for, for the case of possible clouds. So it was all our, um, the, um, all our cameras and all our computers was uh, set to be able, set to be possible to run from the car's uh, accumulate, the car's um, barn. Battery. Battery. 
get garnish better things. So it, if there it, had there been clouds over Magdalen Observatory, we could have driven further afield up until we find clear spots. But the prediction was very clear for uh, May 30th and May 31st. And we used the time and opportunity to visit the observatory, to visit various domes. Actually, this is the, the Hungarian group, Marta Rózsai, the Anta Igaz, myself, Vinko József, and Livia Tema. So they were the two colleagues of us who were they already there from February. They just returned, returned to Hungary two weeks or three weeks ago. So they spent half, half a year uh, in Austria. So we went to the various domes and we could really watch from inside what the astronomers are using over there. This is the oldest one uh, installed in, in 1937, uh, 2.3 meter across, which was at that time the second largest telescope on Earth. Then the other dome was the 2.7 meter telescope. So this picture looks smaller, but these are not hobbits, but real size people. So this is 2.7 <laughs> meter wide uh, optical telescope. Vinko Jozef Vinko is using heavily this one for observing the late time supernovae uh, in narrow band images. <clears throat> and then, of course, we were able to take a look at the place. I don't know how this is uh, enjoyable through the Zoom. So, yes, this was another Hungarian who moved to the United States uh, 30 years ago, Judith Ries Georgi. Uh, who is also into observing uh, minor planets and confirming uh, near Earth objects? I think this is this is not really worth it. That, uh, okay, that we have also an opportunity to enter the Hobby Averly Telescope, which is 11.4 meters across. It's a mosaic uh, mirror, and when it was installed in 1996, 1997, so about 25 years ago, it was the largest telescope. Uh, optical telescope on Earth. Of course, you don't hear much about its results because it's very specific technical design doesn't allow observing a single target for longer than one hour. So it cannot take long images, long exposures for deep imagery. It can only take spectra for a maximum of one hour. So Anta and myself uh, standing in front of the, the Hobby Able Telescope's dome and then Martin climbing dangerously high within the dome just to be able to capture the main mirror of the Hobby Able Telescope and our monthly journal Meteor, the, the, the uh, journal of the Hungarian Astronomical Association. Here is a picture of the model because this design was also exported to the South African uh, to the South African astronomers. The South African Large Telescope is an exact copy of the Hobby Abel Telescope and also used for mostly spectroscopy. But the Polish astronomers were able to uh, develop an instrument which is actually able to take pictures, uh, and then you can make uh, time series observations. With images. The main idea here is that the, the, the detector is located in the prime focus and the tracing, the tracking of the object is, uh, uh, is um, enabled by moving the, the prime focus instrument so that it tracks the objects on the sky. So May 31st was the predicted maximum. This seems to be a very lone picture. It's myself or at least my shadow. And then we were really, we were looking forward to the meteor shower. Here is the visitor center. So if you happen to visit Texas and, uh, and the McDonald Observatory, there's a very nice, like, you know, an old Greek building. You can sit in the circles and then the, the guy will show you the, the uh, constellations. Here was the place where we installed all our cameras, all our uh, devices which were which were to, to help to enable taking the observations and we were also making uh, visual observations parallel to the uh, meter observations. So we could re re afterwards we compared the two recording, the sound recording of the visual observations and various video cameras. Tomorrow there will be a deep more detailed uh, talk, but we had a Sony Alpha 7 camera for very deep uh, video uh, video um, recordings. We estimated afterwards that the lifting magnitude for stars was about eight magnitude, 
we had an all sky 7 camera in the back and a small dmk camera and, and, and ipc camera for for medium or for for wide for um, wide images for for detecting the meteors the brightest one is shown here which was a, a, around i would say right mars so minus two the, it most of the the meteors were fainter faintish but the sky was incredible right. so mental observatory is a very dark place the, the limiting magnitude visually was around 6.5 or between seven so it was really a dark place there is actually a, a, a video of, of this very bright one you may recognize corvus the constellation here here is pika and then sometimes i i think i have started it if not now i yeah, know it's... it started it's just an example of course when you say oops and there was another one over there oh. so actually there there were images where we we could actually capture more than one sometimes even two or i think the bot the largest number is three on a single big single frame and then, and this one was a very very bright one i could i could uh, observe the faint trail for over five minutes with a small pair of binoculars so it was a very very bright uh, uh trail after the, the the event so plenty of meteors were observed we, in total on two nights may 30th and may 31st recorded on the sony uh, video uh, frames 700 meteors 800 meters 700 meteors and in the past few weeks we were very we were tr trying to make the most use of this this is a a, a series of meteors captured with uh, the smallest uh, the dmk camera just to illustrate that indeed there were meters. this was the brightest mm -hmm. So we were at the optimal block, optimal location. We were we had three different cameras. We had five uh, very enthusiastic visual observers. What can we say about these? Norton Sabo will show about the, those further details tomorrow, half past two in the afternoon. It was not the idea for this talk tonight, for which I have another seven minutes was to show the lessons or, or how to organize this kind of um, expedition and how can you maximize the use of uh, this kind of expedition if you have the resources. So after spending three days at the McDonald Observatory, we went further north and west. The next day, June, 3rd, June the 1st, we started our drive to Albuquerque and uh, almost touching the Mexican soil, very close to the Mexican a border and we arrived to Albuquerque on the night. Over the over the way, we uh, stopped at the White Sands National Park, where Marta Rogeni was very enthusiastic to show us how different this is from a real sand because this is a clay powder. It reacts quite differently to to the to the wind. So this is the place where the first nuclear test explosion was done before Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This was actually the, 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 the missile test range where the first X-ray, extra uh, solar, extra um, extraterrestrial X-ray source, Scorpius X-1 was discovered. So here the American, uh, yeah, this is my hand. This is my, my leg, it's not that interesting. So the thing is that we arrived to Albuquerque and, and a strange turn to the story, Christian, was turned to be negative, at least in terms of COVID-19, uh, on the, I don't know, three days afterwards. And then he was able to catch us in Albuquerque. So he joined us from onwards. So he, he, the father of this expedition, missed the real thing. But afterwards, he was able to join us. And I will be very quick because we have not much time left and I don't want to be over my time. So up from Albuquerque, the next stop was Flagstaff. Flagstaff, which is a city of 70,000 people, but it has three different observatories and one geoscientist institute. So it's a really a small place with a huge role of astronomy in the atmosphere or in the city's life. Over the way from Albuquerque to, to Flagstaff, we first 
went through the Petrified Forest National Park, which was another example of how different the, the areas can be. Of course, this is the real petrified trees millions of years ago. They were converted into um, uh, from tree to, to stone. But then we went, we drove through uh, various locations which were really, really unearthed, unearthly places. I can imagine, you know, a science fiction movie shot here uh, on, on moon, on the moon, of course, without the green ones, or on Mars, because it was so much different what the typical European eyes can see in our, on, our, on our continent. And then before arriving to Flagstaff, the Bering Airplane. It was on the way, so it was just 10 minutes, 10 minutes drive from the main route from Albuquerque to Flagstaff. And this was a very, it is a very, very interesting place to see the actual uh, impact, the, the actual leftover of an impact. And we all interested in comets, minor planets, met meteorites, and then being able to visit a real meteor crater, it, it really somehow um, created, uh, you know, opened some internal eyes within myself, which led to a new understanding of this whole topic. Why it is so interesting to us. For example, because these kind of things can happen. So it was very, you know, synergistic feeling to, to be able to watch an outburst or a sort of a normal, an ex, extra activity of a meteor shower and then watching a meteor crater, the Beringer crater. Of course, yes. Another picture of the, our monthly journal, Mete Meteor. Flex from Flagstaff, two hours drive is the Grand Canyons southern entrance. We couldn't leave out Grand Canyon because we represent the Research Center for Astronomy and Sciences. Uh, our research center employs 65 astronomers and about 50 plus geoscientists. So we must, we, we, we felt that we must go there because we were already there. Of course, this is, a, and yes, Martin Rosen almost fell down. What? Well done into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and then in Flagstaff, the highlight was the Lowell Observatory, the place where planet Pluto, of course, these days we call it dwarf planet, Pluto was discovered. So this was the historic dome, the original telescope restored a couple of years ago. And then Kristal Sharnetsky, the discoverer of the first comet this year, and also discoverer of thousands of minor planets stood in front of the telescope, which was used by uh, Clyde Tombo to discover Pluto, and uh, keeping in his hand a book, which was actually wrote by Patrick Moore and, um, and uh, Clyde Tombo, the, what was the darkness, uh, the planet of darkness. It was, it was a very, very, very nice book. So again, a visitor center, which showed us, okay, another group photo, with our local guide and master student at the university in Flagstaff, a visitor center which combines all the strengths of a historic or more than one historic telescope and then the newest techniques. And Lowell Observatory as such was a very mind-opening experience again because it is not an observatory supported by or 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 financed by by the by the by the government. It's mostly maintained by its owners, the family, the Lowell family, and the, from their incomes, as from visitor center, from incomes, from from winning research grants. So they do employ several dozens of research professional researchers, but they don't have a state budget. And myself, as I I I'm refer, I'm re representing. A research institute with a state budget, it was, you know, this is a different concept. Of course, Hungary is not able to maintain, at least the Hungarian uh, circumstances are not, or Hungarian conditions are not very well suited for this kind of financing an institute, but it was interesting to see that there are countries where these kind of things work. From Flagstaff to Las Vegas, this is the final few shots. Because my time is over in Las Vegas, you can find everything what you want. To be honest, it was my very first visit to Las Vegas, and I'm sure that it was my very 
Uh, Christian made a huge press this March when the uh, the U when the uh, English press uh, announced that the Hungarian astronomer discovers a half giraffe sized minor planet. <laughs> that was the March 11 <laughs> event, <laughs> and this is a half giraffe with Christian. And then, of course, you know, in Las Vegas, you find everything, including very strange people, including some astronomers who play a hell of money just to get, you know, one twenty-five dollars uh, winning. So the the uh, the final co the concluding remarks from this, I haven't had enough time to prepare very well, so that's why I'm quite hectic. Uh, it was a hell lot of fun. It was scientifically a very interesting experience. And from an organizational point of view, it was also very interesting. I have visited the United States several times in the past 20 years, 20 plus years, but this kind of expedition requires very well planning in advance. If you ever want to do something like this, please be prepared to plan months in advance because otherwise you will find yourself in trouble. So that, that was probably our most, most important experience. And then the final, final picture, again, the Beringer crater, to be able to see a meteor shower, let's not call it outburst, but elevated activity of a meteor shower, then watching an impact crater on earth, and then sitting next to a guy who just discovered two months before one which hit the earth. It was really an, an, an experience probably once in a lifetime. For us, it was a very, very interesting, uh, again, mind-elevating experience. And I can only recommend to you, if you have the resources, of course, not everyone has the resources, but if you have the resources and opportunity, please do something like this because it will be an unforgettable event. Thank you very much. <laughs>